Hey, everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So, the last time we left off, I believe we did an episode on optimization, which pretty much turned out to be just changing a couple uh, poorly implemented draw calls for our menus and stuff like that. We also have text on the game now, which is pretty cool. Uh, this episode, we're going to start laying the groundwork for tower range, um, as well as changing a couple or fixing a couple issues with our towers, like right there. We just start there where the bullets kind of go off the screen. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that they actually draw over our menu right now. That's pretty easy, but we'll do that, we'll do that later. Uh, for this episode, we're just gonna be working on the fact that our towers miss a lot. Uh, and also that one that you just saw right there, the projectiles that go and they try to hit a dead enemy. So right there and there. Uh, they're trying to hit an enemy that died right here, but they don't know it actually died. So they disappear when they reach it. And we don't really, we wouldn't really want that. It looks like our towers are drunk, so we don't want that. Uh, so there's going to be a few things we're going to get done over the next few episodes. Uh, first off, we're going to give our towers 100% accuracy. Uh, second off, we're going to stop these bullets from being shot if the enemy is going to die. And this was something I wanted to do for a while now, and also was suggested in the comments a couple times on YouTube, so thanks for the suggestions. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. Um, so we, we still have uh, projectiles that are shooting at enemies that don't exist, like right there. So we're going to stop that. We're going to give our towers accuracy so they don't actually miss the enemies, like that. Um, and that will also prevent bullets from going over other enemies that they should hit. Okay. Hopefully I described what we're going to do decently. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually change a small amount of code in all of these classes here. So sometimes we do a lot of work in one class, this time it's going to spread out a little bit. This episode we are going to start in, actually I don't want the wave class or the wave manager, just these classes right here. So the first problem we're going to fix is firing a projectile at an enemy that will be dead by the time we reach it. So to go to our enemy class here, is this our biggest class? I think it might be. 300 lines, just about. It's pretty cool. We're going to make it even bigger. Uh, so public, I'm sorry, private float, speed, X, Y, health, and start health. We're going to add a third health, which is going to be hidden. Hidden health. Uh, I'm naming it that because the player will not see it ever. The player can see the start health, kind of, more or less, uh, and they can see its current health, definitely. Hidden health is just going to be a hidden value in the background that the towers can check against to make sure that they're not going to fire at an enemy that's about to die before the bullet even hits them. All right? So let's go in the uh, constructor here. We have this dot health equals health and start health equals health. And we're going to also set this dot hidden health equal to health. Now the only difference here, and we might actually clean this up a little bit and make it a little bit more optimized. Uh, but I just want to see if this is going to work uh, in the first place here. We might combine hidden health with health in the future. But for now, they're going to be separate, and I think it also demonstrates what we're doing more clearly than combining them right away. Uh, down here, we're going to make a new method, or a couple new methods, right above the getters and setters here. First is going to be public float get hidden health, and that's just the getter for our new hidden health variable. And the other one is public void um, we'll say reduce hidden health by a certain amount in a float, and that is just hidden health minus equals amount. Now, some of you might be able to guess where we're going with this. Uh, basically, we're tracking the health of the enemy and now the hidden health. So how can that help us out? Well, the player can see the health. It's like the fraction on that health bar above the, above the enemy. The hidden health, we're going to check instead of like when the bullet hits the enemy, we check if uh, the health is below zero and if it is, we kill it. We're going to check when the tower fires the bullet, uh, we're going to reduce the hidden health. And then when the tower is choosing another target or its next target to fire at, uh, it's going to get the hidden health. Okay, so it's almost like we're invisibly damaging the enemy as soon as we fire a bullet. And that's also why it's really, really important that our towers have 100% accuracy. Because if they don't, then they're going to say the hidden health is below zero, when in fact the enemy never got hit, so it's still just wandering around, invisible to the towers. So that's why these things kind of go hand in hand. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and go to our tower. <laughs> Where to start? We'll go to our tower class here. And in acquire target, we want to check. Instead of saying E dot is alive, that's just not enough for us anymore. And that's why I was saying we could combine in a way health and hidden health. Um, because is alive is now going to be kind of useless in, in a sense in certain circumstances. Uh, but we'll do that in the future. So instead of checking if it's alive, we're going to go one step further. And we are going to check E dot get hidden health is greater than zero. So not only is it alive, but will also be alive by the time my bullet hits it, is what we're checking here. Uh, let's go to the tower cannon blue. And right now, the way our tower setup is, uh, well, set up, is we have the main tower class, and then each of our custom towers extends the tower class here and implements their own constructor as well as their own shoot method. Right now, all we're doing is just adding a projectile to the array list, but we're also, after that, going to say super dot target dot reduce hidden health by super dot type dot projectile type dot damage. All right, it's pretty long. Uh, we have that right up here, projectile type. Uh, we're just going one step further and putting the damage in as an amount. So now as soon as we shoot, right after we add the projectile to our list and start moving it towards the enemy, we're also going to reduce the hidden health by the, the amount of damage that we know is going to happen to the enemy. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that actually and put it in our Tower Cannon Ice class as well. Do, 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 right there. And that should work as far as our towers will no longer fire at an enemy that will die by the time it hits it, except for the fact that, like I said earlier, uh, our towers still aren't very good at aiming. So if they miss projectiles like that, we'll see if we can get uh, an error to happen here, or not an error, but something to go wrong. Uh, we're missing, we're missing. So what could happen, it looks like it's not gonna happen right now, of course, because I'm trying to demonstrate, is, well, there we get the, the dead projectiles again, first off. Um, but also, some other funny stuff might happen. Anyways, we're going to fix the accuracy. Because at the end of the day, no one wants towers that can't hit stuff anyways. Maybe we'll add a special tower or a special type of tower that um, actually relies on like speed and physics and like leading the, the target to hit it uh, and can hit other enemies and stuff like that. But that'll definitely be accept the exception, not the rule. Right now, it's the rule that we rely on speed and good timing and good aim. Uh, I think that should be the exception. I think the rule should be you're spending money on a tower, it better work, right? So let's go ahead and go to the projectile type class. Just kidding, projectile class, okay? Uh, right now, now this is a very easy fix, and it's not a perfect solution because again, we're at the point in our game development where you could possibly, there's like a, there's a hundred different ways to skin a cat, right? There's an expression. Um, so these fixes, actually have multiple different ways that people might want to implement to their own game. And feel free to post in the comments if there's a different way you did uh, fix this issue or maybe you decided it wasn't an issue and it was perfect for your game. Feel free to post it in the comments so other people can help each other out and stuff. But the way I'm going to do it is right now we're calling calculate, what are we calling it? The constructor? Calculate direction one time, which means as soon as our projectile comes to life, it looks at where the enemy is currently, like right at that second, and it says that's where the enemy is going to be forever. I'm just going to go towards that spot until I die, right? Which isn't really perfect. Uh, instead, what we should do is we should call if alive. What is it? Calculate direction. Calculate direction every update. Now, make sure you only do it inside of the if alive check. Otherwise, you're just wasting computing power. So to demonstrate what this looks like, I'm going to change the cannonball speed from 500 to 200. And it's going to look a little wonky. Remember, our game's not going to look like this long term. This is just to demonstrate kind of what, it, what it's doing. Play some towers down and look at the bullet. And you'll see it actually curves around. It's like a curveball where they both will hit their target, even though they're moving. 
Because every single time they update, they're looking at where the enemy currently is, and they're firing towards it. And again, we still have these these dead uh, projectiles here. Don't don't think I didn't notice those. Uh, the next step would be for us to implement a range for our tower where, because right now we can place a tower way over here, and it'll still fire because our is in range check does not work at all for the tower. We never even made one really. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're not going to have these towers across the map shooting probably, right? They should probably only be able to hit like a little square around them. Maybe you'll have like a sniper tower in the far corner that can shoot stuff or a rocket tower. Uh, in fact, this is how our rockets are going to look, a little sneak peek. Our rockets are obviously going to have that cool kind of snaky follow the target homing in effect. Um, but let's go and increase the speed back up. We put it at 600. And we're going to see what happens when we place the towers somewhere that should be within range of enemies in normal game. Like right there. So we have now... Oh, it's still doing that. Oh, you know why? This is silly. Okay. The reason we're still getting those dead pixels is because we didn't update the tower class. Well, we did in some ways, but we actually want to update it over here. In the update method, we check if we don't have a target, then get a new target, right? But the problem is we can still have a target that its hidden health is below zero, right? So let's go ahead and change that to if we don't have a target or, make sure it's not and and, make sure it's or if our target dot get hidden health oops is less than zero and i'm going to change the speed back down again to see if this worked hit play and put our towers over here and we should not any longer get towers shooting the enemies they'll be dead by the time the projectile hits there so no more dead pixels or dead projectiles hitting nothing as you can see here we only fire the amount of ammo that we need so one, two, three, four, five, six shots are fired total, and they all hit their target. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it looked kind of wonky with uh, bullets just kind of firing off the screen and uh, disappearing in the middle of the game, not hitting their targets. So I'm glad we could fix that. I'm going to put the speed back up again to 600, and we can see what it finally looks like. Um, but those were two issues that made the game definitely look, you know, not very professional. And you can still see it looks a little weird, that curve, uh, at least for me. I think what we might do in the long term is just calculate exactly where the enemy is going to be and just fire at a straight line towards them. Uh, but for now, the reason we did this right now is it allows us to set up a way for our tower's range to work, which we'll do in the next few episodes. All right. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Make sure to check out the Java FX tutorial series that I just started recently. You can click it right here on the screen. Uh, IndieProgrammer.com slash Patreon. I made like a whole page that shows like what goes into every episode. Editing, recording, planning, uploading, you know, decent read. Uh, also, you can check out next week's episode right now, if you're watching this on YouTube and it's not out yet, at uh, Patreon.com slash IndieProgrammer. Just pledge the early bird amount and you get access to a bunch of cool stuff. And also it helps me out and uh, supports the series for more episodes. So that's great. All right, everyone, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer. <laughs>